Well, 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 everybody, uh, nice to see you all here once again. It's time for another episode of TT Burger Burgs and Fries Game Talk with a Shake, and we are on episode 8 here. This is kind of part 2 of what we have worked with. in! So that's here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was gonna introduce you, but like, yeah, but, um, yeah. Like, Come on, we gotta change it up every now and then. Yeah, that that's true, yeah, well, that, yeah, like, we're, we're I'm here here with the two people as your last time, I already mentioned, Sadet the Hyperactive Princess, and from, <laughs> all, the, all the way from her hometown in Canada, and also once again is... Uh, it's Grim, and I never left. <laughs> nope, never left here. And, like, yeah, I hope you're all, all enjoying the week and stuff like that, because I know we just got done with Memorial Day and stuff like that, and hope you're all enjoying my Need for Speed, Speed franchise review. Like I mentioned, it'll be in six parts, and by the time it's just recording, three parts, three parts are already done. So I hope you are, you are all enjoying them and stuff, because there's more Need for Speed action coming. And I just want to let it out there that, that, that the next few episodes are, are going to be, be on racing genre of racing franchises so you like racing games well. for you all there and the series after that it's just gonna be one word it was all you only hit in is, is one word it's a compound word and and it's known for crashes for the crashes so that's, that's the only hit you're getting anyone ha has a guess comment down below but then you'll find out that you'll find out soon actually i'll give you a hint ah! i'll give you a hint blank out that's your only hint that's the only hint you're getting and no no and anyone in, in, in there don't say what it is Ow. Blank out. No that's spoiling. All. No spoiling, yeah. Blank out. Yeah, blank and the word out. That's the only hint you're getting. And we're going to be talking... I think to... I already know what it is, though. It's... Yeah. Oh, it's... Dang it, censor. Yeah, <laughs> censor, censor. Yep, you're censored until you have detail. <laughs> and until episode 179, you'll find out. Oh, it's well, closer to the... Topic. I would tell everyone, but unfortunately... TT here made me sign an NDA before we started this this uh podcast so i can't tell any of you mm -mm. and i and i believe my wild guess is correct but my own sensor just went off so <laughs> yep. i can't yep. say it nope not until not 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 until i finish up the 178 and yeah but getting back and back on topic here today we're going to be talking about pc mods now this is something i don't really really know much about i'm not really Big enough, never it's done. PC Gaming Part 2, Electric Boogaloo! Mm -hmm. <laughs> and these guys... Starting mods! And, yep, and we're on top of <laughs> PC mods here, with, with, the, with the laughing hike Fred the Princess here just set up there. <laughs> Who tends to have a huge laughing problem like how she does now and makes us all laugh <laughs> up here? <laughs> And yep, I, I was hey, they say laughter is the best of medicine. That's true. That's that true. Is true. Yeah, it's true, definitely. Like some of the things to make and you laugh. And there is no one that laughs better and louder than Sedet. The hyperactive, <laughs> the hyperactive <laughs> princess Sedet. <laughs> Yep, and now oh. I know these guys are gonna be doing most of the talking here. Because I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna chime in here and there, but I'm not. I don't really know much about mods and stuff like that. Oh, they can alter games and costumes and all that stuff. So. You, you sell yourself short, probably. You probably know something about mods, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I know the basics of mods, like mods that you, you can mod, like your PC games or your console stuff, like that which is hard to do for you for console stuff. So usually most of the mods are on PC, so because they're easy to mod, and you know, like there, there's tons of mods out there, like mods that have like different characters and stuff like that, or mods that have like 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 costumes or so, or or mods. And mods that pretty much change the whole game in general. Yeah, yeah. and I can think of, I can think of three. That I don't even play, but <laughs> yeah, the anyway, three major mods we get that changed. Started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's three major mods that changed the entire landscape of of gaming, and they all come from I would say the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, let us begin our conversation of mods. Yes, let's we'll get to have Sedet start us off here. Absolutely, well? sounds good. Mm -hmm. I play a lot of games that are that have cap modding capabilities. So, <laughs> well, why don't we start just with one of the yeah, most popular fun. games to mod, Minecraft? Mm, oh, I know. oh man, that is so true. You know, it, it, it's crazy. Uh, and I know you're probably going to give us some of the most popular mods, but and I'm not. A, this is coming from someone who's not really a Minecraft fan. I'm not really a Minecraft fan, but. Um, I just, I know, just, you know, from reading online and listening to other people, I know that are Minecraft fans, as I'm sure you're going to tell us, 
The amount of mods for Minecraft is just, it's amazing. The yeah, amount of stuff on, that's out there. On CurseForge alone, there is a total of 76,640 mods. Mind boggling. Uh, seriously, I don't even say that sarcastically. Like coming from someone who is a programmer, myself, that is just mind boggling that there's that many out there. Like, a lot of mods hardly hit the 1,000s for games. Heck, I see one on CurseForge here for Loop Hero only has one mod right now. But then again, Loop Hero, as well as Resident Evil Village, they're brand new, so of course, not going to have many mods. But hmm. I've also seen games that's been around... Oh, excuse me. That's been around for a while on CurseForge with the mods. Grand Theft Auto V only has like three mods. Staxel only has three mods. And Grand Theft Auto V is a game. I mean, of course, that's uh, what, a, a decade old now? Yeah. Um, and that also has thousands of mods out there just, just in the wild. I'm not saying on, on that particular site. But I'm just, just saying on Curse Forge in general. Yeah. Right, understood. Yeah. Yeah. But if... on Curse Forge, the top ten games with the most mods, starting from ten. Yeah. Because like um I should also Elder mention... Scrolls Skyrim with mm, two hundred and nine. Whoa. Rift with 234, Runes of Magic, 269, nice. <laughs> <laughs> World of Tanks, 424, Terraria, 717, Wild Star, 771, <laughs> Curveball Space Program, 1,981 mods. Whoa, that's a lot. Starcraft 2, 2,264 mods. World of Warcraft, 8,841 mods. And Minecraft <sighs> pretty much topples them all. 76,000, you said, right? Seventy-six thousand six hundred and forty. Oh my God, that is that's crazy. Omg, is but right. at the same time, awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. just to know that the uh, community is so large behind that game is amazing. You know, I'm not again not a Minecraft fan myself, but you know, anytime I hear about a fandom so strong, I'm I'm actually I'm actually proud to be in video games and to know that there are fandoms that are that strong and that large and that supportive, and I think it's wonderful. Some Minecraft mods gives you new biomes to play with, new blocks to play with, new enemies to kill. And one of the m most popular mod packs, which is a grouping of mods, some of them having to be reworked to work better with other mods, aka play nice children. Not children. <laughs> play nice now. Be nice for mommy and daddy. And the most popular one, at least from my memory, is RL Craft, which hmm. pretty much adds a lot of stuff. Uh, can you give us like, really some examples? Uh, Dragons can... are assholes. Yes, ex <laughs> I I have heard. Uh, any like like really good examples of stuff that like that that mod has added the to the well, game? It has a thirst bar, has weather, has temperatures, has seasons. Pretty much it also has stuff from Pam's Harvest Craft mods, has stuff from Dragon Ice and Fire, has so many mods in it. It's one of the heavier mod packs, if not the heaviest. Cool. Very. <laughs> and 
it's one of the popular, <coughs> if not the most popular, mod packs in Minecraft history. Yeah, I remember um, like oh. oh. I don't mean to interrupt you, like, I just, it's like, I remember, like, when I was in college, like, this guy, like, had a bunch of these Sonic, like, mods from Minecraft, playing as, like, Sonic, like, Sonic characters and stuff like that was actually a, a very, a very, very cool idea there, for sure, like, it's just that, it's sure, like, um, seeing those, those, the scene, how the way they looked, reminded me of this game on the PS3 called 3D Dot Game Heroes, which was a Zelda clone, which I was not yeah. a big fan of, but I'm just staying there but like that's what that's what it reminded me of it was like one of those like 8-bit looking looking ones but modern at the same time and it's just like the guy that like, had a bunch had like like my, like my buddy who did it had had a, had, a, had a bunch of shadow equipment and sound equipment and just like sure the backgrounds were still like like minecraft looking but still it was just it, it was it was really cool to have because like it just showed that you can you can make any type of mod for it you can make like a tekken mod or so for minecraft and you can just like or make it make like a soul Calibur their live mod and it and you'd be able to be playable definitely that was neat Definitely. And there's another mod that turns Minecraft into a VR game. VR Minecraft? Whoa. <laughs> I never mm -hmm. Wow. Does it work on any uh like VR headset or do you have to have I a don't specific... know I don't know for sure on that part, but there is videos on that sort of things ranging from reviews of the mods to Tutorials on the mods, to just people outright playing the mods, hmm. as well as randomizing them. Hmm. Hmm. I mean that. I have seen cool. a YouTuber. I have seen a YouTuber do a sky block with every single mod he could get. And his computer has either overloaded and crashed a couple times or almost. I believe it. You gotta and have the, a lot of RAM probably to, to believe run some of that stuff, right? I, I wouldn't don't. be surprised if somebody actually put their computer tower in their fridge freezer just to keep it cool. It wouldn't because surprise. I have actually seen that when I was watching a video about a Minecraft server. Wow, that is some serious overclocking. <laughs> mega, <laughs> me mega overclocking for sure is what I got Mega say. overclocking, yeah. Well, I guess that's, uh, you know, when you need overclocking like that, that's why you have to go with the, the liquid, liquid cooling systems. But... but sometimes that's not even enough. Sometimes you have to go that far. You gotta actually, free, you gotta deep freeze that PC, that PC. <laughs> I've actually PC's the goal. Yeah, I mean, I've actually <laughs> seen mods like, like people like like customize levels for Sonic Adventure One and Two, which is still going on to this day. That people are still making mods like like like, like that, that and everything, even like Grand Theft Auto Three and Grand Theft Auto Spice City and San Andreas. And, well, uh, I mean, when you're talking about um, like a Sonic, well, you said Sonic Adventures, meaning like the Dreamcast games. Yeah, the 3D okay. Dreamcast. You know, like the they 3D are... Okay, because I, because there is, I, you know, I do consider like a slight difference between mods and ROM hacks. You know, ROM hacks are when you take an old 8-bit or 16-bit game, like a like a Super Nintendo game or a SNES game or even Atari game, right? And you take the ROM and people play with it. They add stuff to it. They change it, um, and you know, we call those ROM hacks, where they're basically taking, like, an old 8-bit game that's, um, that they have as a ROM on their computer. Um, sometimes they'll do ROM dumps, and they'll actually dump the ROM hack back onto cartridges, but, you know, they change up an old game. They add stuff to it. Um, mm -hmm. And we call those ROM hacks. Um, and I guess that is modding. It, it, it is modding as well. Um, mm -hmm. Although that's not, not PC modding, but that is modding as well. Um so when I, I just want to start off with uh, three quick mods that um, really were important not just to me, but I think to kind of like modding and gaming overall. And I, you know, I, I wonder if uh, we've gotten to the point where a lot of people don't even think of these mods anymore because um, they're from quite a few years ago. Uh, two of them are actually mods of Valve games, Half-Life to be exact. Oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I know. I know. So we have, yep. So we have the first two that I'm going to mention quickly 
is Counter Strike, and the second mod, which is from a few years later, is Black Mesa. So Counter Strike, uh, a lot of people don't even realize was a mod. It wasn't something that Valve had originally did. Um, it was the multiplayer mod for Half Life. Um, the the basically the terrorist versus counter terrorist multiplayer blockbuster that that it became. Um, but it, it wasn't something that Valve originally did. It, 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 it was a mod, um, and it's a mod from a long time ago. Um, I feel like Counter-Strike, that particular mod, became kind of like a blueprint for so many first-person shooters that came uh, later down the line that uh, you know people don't even remember it anymore. Well, people probably remember Counter-Strike, but they don't remember it as a, as a mod when that's what it really was, which is... Which is which is crazy, right? And then Black Mesa, which at this point I think is probably about 12 years old, uh, maybe f something along those lines. Somewhere but Black there. Mesa is literally uh, a modded version of Half-Life 2. So what they did is they took Half-Life 2 and they rebuilt the original Half-Life game using the Half-Life 2 engine. Now that's and they called the it Black Mesa. That's the way to go because I was not the biggest fan. I thought Half Life One was a lot better than Half Life Two. So yeah, that's the way to go there. You want to make Half Life Two playable? Exactly. Uh, the Half Life Two engine was clearly a, a lot uh, sort of player friendly, if you want to say, <laughs> because um, it, they were almost almost different kind of eras of of gaming. But Black Mesa was literally the original game completely rebuilt under Half-Life 2, and that was a huge undertaking. Um, that was a huge, huge project. Um, and if you want to play and experience Half-Life 1, definitely play Black Mesa. Definitely play that version of it. Um, and the third one I will mention, and this is actually a mod of a game that Sadet mentioned as uh, one of the games in the top 10 uh, list on uh, the site she was looking at is a mod for Warcraft 3. Hmm. And this mod started an entire genre of video gaming today that is huge in esports and led to one of the largest games, I shouldn't say largest games, but I should say one of the highest played competitive games online. And that is Dota. I so never the played Dota. The, the original Dota, not Dota 2, but the original Dota was a mod for Warcraft 3. And that's where MOBAs came from. It is the first MOBA. Hmm. And it was a mod for Warcraft 3. And it, you know, led to Dota 2. It led to League of Legends. And the entire MOBA genre, which is massive. It is massive. Go on Twitch. Uh, Dota 2 and League of Legends are, one, are, are, are two of the, uh, you know, two of the highest played games. They are two of the, you know, leading eSport games right there. So uh, those three mods to me are, are really, really important. Just not to modding, but to kind of like vid modern video games in general, especially Counter Strike and and Dota. And I think you know there's still a lot of people out there that don't even realize that Dota, kind of the first MOBA, the originator of the MOBA, um, started as a Warcraft 3 mod, and that's where it came from. You know, and then again, like I said, leading into Dota 2 and League of Legends. Um, <sighs> Yeah, and I, I think that those three are super important when we're talking about mods and how mods have really affected um, sort of the, the, the landscape of, of PC gaming or just gaming in general. You yeah, know? it's like, it, it just amazes me that mods are still happening just to this day because, like, with all those, like, popular mods, then it's going to make, like, even more mods that are even, even a lot cooler and stuff. Like, I know, like, GoldenEye has been modded a lot for new levels and everything like that. GoldenEye has been modded a lot and still is getting modded to this day. In fact, GoldenEye is interesting because it's one of my favorite games on the Nintendo 64. And, like, knowing that that, that game is still getting a lot of love this, to this day, we're able to get modded to make custom levels and stuff. Yeah, that, that's, it's that's... really impressive what people can do. I'm currently on another site I go on right now with the list of m most mods 
on that site for the different games it has. And I know, um, so that you had mentioned StarCraft II and mods. Um, I just want to point out that StarCraft II um, was built as a game um, was built. It was built as a game that it was easily mod moddable. They made it so that you could basically build mini games for it. So um, I That's don't know if impressive. yeah. I, so I don't know if I would hesitate to call them mods and more like uh, they call the they call it user map settings. So basically, there's an option in StarCraft II called user map settings. And it allows you to like basically build mini games inside StarCraft using all of the StarCraft assets, and even allowing you to bring StarCraft One assets into StarCraft Two. Um, well, Whoa. that they programmed for StarCraft Two, and it's called you yeah, again. It's called user map settings, and um, that's what those are. So I, you know, I guess yes, they are modifications to the to the game. But there were modifications that kind of Blizzard pre-set up the ability for people to to do. So, um, on this other site I'm on, the top 10 modded games on this one is The Witcher 3 with 3.4k, Star Wars Battle Frontier with 4.6k, Stardew Valley with 6.6k, Morrowind with 8.2k, Fallout 3 with 15.6k, Fallout New Vegas 23.7k, Oblivion 30.2k, Skyrim Special Edition 36.1k, Fallout 4 37.8k and then Skyrim 66.5k on Nexus mods. The one thing that I uh, hear out of that list is the depth of Bethesda games. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> um and I have to say that you know you know I I I was I I played through the the Bethesda Fallout games, and they were okay. I, I didn't mind them. I didn't mod, mod them that heavily because, you know, I didn't play as much of them as I did the Elder Scrolls games, but I have always been a huge Elder Scrolls fan. So, um, especially with Skyrim, because, hell, I've had Skyrim and played it on and off for the last decade, right? So I've modded it to hell and back, and... Like, just the graphical enhancement mods are insane. Like, the level that the graphical enhancement mods have brought that game to is is nuts. Now, when The Witcher 3 came out, I loved that game as well, and that game is, that game is awesome. Um, much better than the other two Witcher games, I will say, because I have played all three Witcher games, and the first two were meh. I mean, the second one, in you know, in the the date and time it came out, like it was pretty cool. The first one was a total disaster, but um, I really it did enjoy the second one. Isn't usually the first game nine times out of well, more like six times out of ten a disaster? Yeah, I mean, definitely that happens a lot. I I totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. Um, I mean, look how broken Pokemon is in its first gen. Yep. Yeah, but I, I still loved my Pokemon Yellow. I Same. played that so much. I loved Pokemon Yellow. I traded a Neo Geo Pocket Color for a Color Game Boy and a Pokemon Yellow. A story for another day. But, uh, um, yeah, so over the years, I have played so much Skyrim, you know, you know, trying to... Uh, to, to, to to do different things and different types of classes and well not classes per se because the game doesn't really have classes um it has a skill tree um but i you know i've just i've gone through so many mods because you know mods that have added new storylines and new areas and it's just crazy all the stuff that they've done with skyrim um 
unfortunately, I have to say this about Bethesda games and Skyrim in particular, and that's that Skyrim always had a lot of bugs in it, and those were bugs almost every that didn't release, even, almost every release to be exact. Yeah, and those were bugs that didn't even get ironed out going into the special edition. You'd think that going to the special edition, which was you know quite a few years after um, the initial release of Skyrim, that they would have fixed the mods. and uh, I'm sorry, the bugs. And then you but, got the odd person that makes a mod being like, ugh, these bugs are horrendous. I'm going to make a mod to fix all of those. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Which is definitely appreciated to yeah. modders that do that. And there is, what's for Skyrim, there is what's called like the, the general community mod. And that mod is basically all the bug fixes for Skyrim. And look, even... Uh, Bethesda came out and they backed that mod. And Bethesda, you they'll even love that when companies actually yeah, back up mods. Well, they'll even they even came out and said, well, if you're gonna play Skyrim, you should download this mod because it fixes all the bugs we didn't fix. You know, they don't say it that way, but Did quote you... unquote, that's basically what they're saying. Yeah, download this mod because it fixes all the bugs that we didn't fix. Do what you now, want to. Um, now Bethesda. Really? Download this mod because we're too lazy to actually fix them. <laughs> exactly. You, you know, uh, remember when they released the Switch and the VR, um, the the VR version of Skyrim? Everyone thought that they would at least incorporate that mod into those versions of Skyrim, um, so that it would get fixed. But they didn't. So if you want to play the VR version of Skyrim, which by the which by the way is really cool, it's it's really cool to play Skyrim with a VR headset, um, but if you want to do that, you can't use any of the bug fixes. And if you want to play Skyrim on the Switch, there you there are no mods for the Switch, so you can't actually mod Skyrim on the Switch. So, which was kind of sad. I mean, it's just the nature of the Switch. You can't you can't uh, get mods for any of the games. Um, so you have to play the kind of the buggy. Uh, special editions that that were released for VR and, and the Switch, so just just kind of like the way it is. Um, but one of the reasons why I think so many mods are available for all of these Bethesda games is Bethesda has always been uh, very mod friendly. You know, they've never tried to shut people out of doing mods or shut down mods. They've even had programs where they basically reach out to the community and say, who can build the best mod, you know? That, or Bethesda's like, we're too lazy to make our games even better. You guys do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bethesda has, you know, released, like, their own guidelines on, you know, what they want to see in mods, what they don't want to see in mods, um... I'm sure that Bethesda doesn't like the nude or porn mods that exist for Skyrim, but you know, <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. but they're out there and they exist, and because they exist for for everything, you know, every game probably has a nude mod. I shouldn't say every oh, game, but yeah, tons of that games is have that's true. Mods. That's true. Resident Evil Three. A chunk Res of them at least to do. Yes, because Resident Evil Three, Resident Evil Two have it. Dead or Alive has nude mods and stuff. I mean, like those. Those mods are pretty much If you know everywhere. where to look, because I know it's not on Nexus mods, but yeah. if you know where to look, there's actually one for Stardew Valley. I I believe it. I believe it. But, you know, you're right. And there's you... some for Monster Hunter World on the PC. You're right about uh, Bethesda and mods. And look, uh, would Bethesda have been so successful if not for the modding communities. And, and there are people out there that argue they wouldn't have been, you know? And think about this. They, they well, all of Zenimax, not just Bethesda, but all of Zenimax, which Bethesda is part of and id Software is part of, um, got sold to Microsoft for $7 billion. And if it wasn't for that modding community um, keeping these Bethesda games alive and both Doom games being so good over the last couple years, you know, would have Microsoft 
paid that much for it. Probably not, right? Probably not. But, you know, Microsoft wanted Doom. They wanted Elder Scrolls. They wanted Starfield, which is coming up. It hasn't come out yet, by the way. Um, these are, They wanted Elder Scrolls Six, and they wanted uh, Elder Scrolls Online, and these are the reasons why Microsoft wanted wanted Zenimax. So, but yeah, I don't think Bethesda would have been as successful or as popular if it wasn't for the mods. And, and by the way, and if there's anyone out there that wants to play Morrowind, uh, play it on the PC and get the combat mod because the combat in Morrowind is so bad. The oh, game is Lord. so good. I, I it's so talk. good. I love Morrowind, but the combat in the base game is so bad. And there is a mod that makes it better. Does it completely fix it? No, it doesn't because it's just a very old game. But it it does make it it does make it better. Moral win. I'm sorry. Moral. I know this is kind of. We're talking about the mods around me right now. Moral win was garbage. It was one of the most boring games I've ever played. It could be the cure for insomnia, bro. You know because it was just. It was wow. Just, wow. TT. Oblivion was Moral... ten times better. I'm sorry. Oblivion was much better. This... So I I think uh, the the skill tree the skills and the stats and everything was better in Moral win than it was Oblivion. You know, in Oblivion, they started to scale things back and go kind of like into the RPG light kind of direction. And then Skyrim, they took even further into the RPG light uh, direction. And Morrowind was more of a hardcore, um, more of a hardcore RPG. I mean, if you didn't like Morrowind, then uh, did you ever play Daggerfall or Arena, which was Elder Scrolls 1 and 2? No, I, here's the thing. I didn't even know about Elder Scrolls until until my brother got Morrowind. So I didn't know about any of that thing, about the Elder Scrolls game. Other Scrolls well, games. I, I mean, if you would have played it back in the day when it when it when it came out, Morrowind, just like yeah, Morrowind yeah, when it came I, I out, I played it in two thousand five. In, in I, I, pl I played it in two thousand five, which was about when Oblivion came out. Uh, well, I mean, Oblivion came early, out what, to, early, uh, to, early to early two thousand and five. Okay, yeah, because Oblivion, I think, might have been early 2006. You know, a game that I've never downloaded mods for, and I bet you there are mods for it, um, and I don't know if Sadat, if you could search, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2. Oh, man, um, it's a fun, a fun I bet you, I bet you that there are tons of mods for those, and that was something I was thinking about the other day when we had talked about doing mods as a topic, was, hmm, I wonder if there are... Tons of mods for Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2. Now, I hate what they've done. There is Star on Nexus. There's there mods is on there. Nexus. There's mods. Cool. I'm going to have to look into those. Um, I'll send you the link. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I guess one more that comes to my mind, and I'll pass it off to Sadet again so she can throw out some more of her favorite mods uh, for us, is um, Deus Ex, the original game. Not the sequels, not, like... For a second, I thought you were about to say Deus Ex Machina. Or Deus Ex, uh, the, the conspiracy, the, the PlayStation port, PlayStation 2 port of the first Deus Ex. Which is yeah, not game. that. I, I'm, uh, that's a, I give that one a mixed review. But the original Deus Ex game by Warren Spector, the first one, w was an incredible game. Um, Warren Spector... Um, he also did System Shock too before before uh, he did Deus Ex, and you know he was supposed to continue on with that series, but uh, you know what happens? People move on, companies change hands. Through that, so he had to create it. He had he had to create a new series, and he created Deus Ex, the, the original one, and that game is hailed as uh, close to being a masterpiece. And, by the way, Deus Ex Invisible War, which was the actual second one, was so bad. Oh, my God. That mm. game is so bad. And it only came out a couple years after, but it was, you know, uh, uh, it was just an awful bomb of a game. But over the last years, and Deus Ex now is a 20-year-old game, but over the last years, I should say, no, not over the last years, but over the last decade... Um, there's been graphics overhauls, there's been um, combat system overhauls on that game, and people have just really, really made that game a lot more modern, and they've taken that classic, and through modding, have made it uh, far more modern. 
And in fact, if you go on to GOG and Steam and you buy Deus Ex, the original game, because of course it's on there, the game automatically comes, I don't know if it's pre-installed, it might give you the option to install it or it might come pre-installed, but it comes pre-installed with um, the major community mod that has all of the graphical updates, all of the combat updates, all of those updates that kind of bring it into kind of the 21st century from being a late 20th century game. And they have really done a great service to that. And recently, I heard that there are mods, uh, and they might not even be new mods, but there are mods that actually take Deus Ex and give it a whole new story with new NPCs and a new city and um, just a lot of new plot elements. Um, and that's one that I had never seen before. And that's one that I'm interested in looking into. Um, but it just goes to show you, again, what, what, what mods can do. I mean, they can literally take a game like Deus Ex and, and just create a whole new game out of it, um, which is amazing, which is amazing. Mods can give you a whole new viewpoint with adding VR and such, or even new camera modes. Yep, Mods VR. can add new creatures, like, for example... One of the games that's actually has been backed by mods and the developers of the game is pretty much always thumbs up and has made some of the mods official Ark Survival Evolved. Ooh, if you want to talk about classic mods, we got to talk about Doom mods. Doom, Doom is still being modded sure. this day. I, mean, I can't sure, believe yeah, it. We can talk about Doom mods. But, but yeah, I, I just wanted to agree with, with Sadat uh, that... You know, I have seen, I haven't really played much ARC, but I have seen uh, that that is a thriving mm -hmm. uh, modding community, and uh, they have done a lot for that game. I have seen the game put on a hard mode because of the mods. I have seen the game have so many n new and unique creatures because of the mods. I have seen improvements of creature because of the mods. I have seen items that should have been vanilla in the first place. But you can only get because of mods. Yeah. But I, I want to talk a, a little bit about these Doom mods here. I mean, does anyone know? Yeah, sure. Anybody here in the group know about the Doom mods that, that they made? No. Nope. Um, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of Doom mods. I saw one the other day that turned Doom... I don't know if it was Doom 1 or Doom 2, I guess it doesn't matter, uh, they're both on the same engine, but that turned Doom into like a pirate game, where like you were on pirate ships, and uh, you actually had do wel do, uh, like welding flintlock pistols, and Ooh, I, don't know, I thought it was really cool. Dual wielding in a, a dual are wielding a pirate. A army matey. <laughs> <laughs> I know so that says not to do the pirate departures, but... Uh, army matey. <laughs> Sorry that that had to do it there. <laughs> but um I like to Don't start... worry, I'll just have to whack you with a giant paper fan later. Yeah. Oh, but like it's good, you deserve it. But also Duke Nukem 3D is being modded, still being modded to this day as well. Duke Nukem 3D is being modded to this day and stuff. Like a lot of those classic 2D games like Wolfenstein, Hexen, Power Slave, Doom, and all of them are being modded to this day and still are fun as ever. I mean <laughs> It's very cool to see, like, Doom, a 1993 PC game, being modded to look all modern while looking 2D at the same time. Just show the like, and people love the game and they'll never stop loving it. I mean, sure, I'll stick with the PlayStation Doom instead of that because I feel like, like that's the best version of Doom, in my opinion. But still, like, to see all the, those, those mods there so that have everything all explosive and fiery looking, like, 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 like you're in hell or something like that or so, yeah, it's just, it's what... Well I just want to throw this out there because you mentioned Duke Nukem, and you know that the uh, engine that Duke Nukem was built on was was actually called the Build Engine. Um, nope. So I thought it used the Doom Engine because I thought it used the Doom Engine actually. Nope. It you it did not. It used an engine that was called the Build Engine. Um, Interesting name. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But a game just came out recently. Uh, I, I think it was maybe the beginning of last year, or the mid-last year, uh, or it could have been the end of 2019, but it was a, a game called Ion Fury. 
and it is a brand new build engine game. So basically, yeah, it, it, it's it's a brand new game that used enhanced version of the build engine, which was the engine that was used uh, for Duke Duke Nukem. Um, and Ion Fury is it's it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you should definitely give it a try and look it up. Um, it it's not a mod for Duke place. Nukem. It's a complete game. But it it is a game that uses a modified version of the build engine. So um, it is a mod, but it's not a mod. Well, it's, it's a it's, mod, not a mod. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, it's like, um, you know, like the Unreal Engine is used in a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of different games. They're not mods of each other. They're just using like that engine, and that's kind of like what you know they use the build engine for um, to to build that. Uh, Doom the Doom engine is um, a, a separate engine. It's a separate engine. And then they had the Quake engine as well. I id Software had the Quake engine, but id Software, um, as far as I know, does not um, license out their engines. So, and id owned Doom, uh, the old Doom games, and um, ZeniMax owns the new Doom games uh, because they own id. But I believe id software, all of their shooters are built on their own engines. Um, I don't think they use anyone else's engines, and they don't let anyone else use their engine. So. True that. But yeah, the build, the build engine is 25 years old. Uh, September thirtieth, nineteen ninety five. It released. Man, I, uh, I you know, just just think about that. Reminds me of the days when Duke Nukem three D was like was like considered cutting edge and the next best thing because it's like um it just it just it's amazing on how, how how crazy that that all was. Cause I remember like whoa three D like whoa it's so cool and then like like cause like nowadays it's like whoa so that just like things tend to change for sure definitely. Um, by the way, uh, if, if you if you do want a, a little bit of info on the Doom engine, uh, the the engine that ran Doom One and Two was called ID, or I should say ID, ID Tech One engine. That's what it was called. It was called the ID Tech One engine, aka the Doom engine. Uh, so TT, if you know of any like major kick-ass Doom mods, like clue us in here. You know, I'd love to hear about some, like, and I've seen a lot of them, but, you know, I can't think of a lot of them off the top of my head. But um, if you know of any, like, kick-ass Doom mods, let us in. Well, I don't know the names of the Doom mod. I don't know the names of them, but I know... But I know of them per se. Like I mean, I just it's like I don't remember. I mean, that's my fault there for not knowing the names of them. So that's that's my fault there. But I know that there's tons of them. Like tons. I mean, I see people play them all the time. Like um, I mean, like, I just I just ha- I just had I just had one of the names remembered. Just like this is like, like like about a while ago. But I just can't remember what it is at the moment. But I know they exist. I mean, I've seen them on YouTube. I've heard about them through friends. So I I know they're out there. I just can't think of think of the names at the moment. So the only one I- that I can think of. Uh, oh, so that did you have? Did you have one that you knew of? But in the end, mods are great. They are a great addition to gaming as a whole. I just like how like a yeah, mod... absolutely. I I will say the only Doom one I can think of that I remember from when I was a kid was called Z Doom. Do you know the Z Doom? Uh, the Z Doom. I, I mod. I heard of it, but can you, I mean, I just can you tell me a little bit more about it so I know which one you're talking about because I know a lot of the Doom mods. Can you be a little, little more specific? Um, uh, Z Doom. It just added a it added a bunch of weapons, a bunch of quests, um, and more levels and stuff. And more levels, yeah. Yeah, I, I, mean, yeah, was, yeah, I know, I know. It was one about. of the original. It was one of the it was one of the original ones. Um, and then it was like G Z Doom. There was like ATP Doom, was NT the, was there Doom. One, was, there one called, all, was there one called Burger Doom? I just want to ask. No, is there one called Burger Doom? There, there could have been. I like I said. I I only know of a couple of the original um, mods. I don't I don't know of um, any of the newer ones or ones that have come out over the over the years. Well, I, that, was a, that was a I, joke. I, that was a joke. Burger Doom as in TG Burger 8. Like, Burger Doom. That's what was just, that was a joke. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Is there a burger? I don't know, but you know what? We could probably we could probably take that that you know the the Doom engine and build TT Burger. Yeah. A Doom variant. Yep. You want to do it, Snap? We can do it. We can do it. Let's do it. Have it start in and a make burger. And the ammo burgers. Yeah. Yeah. And... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who would be the enemy? And the BF. Then? And fries. The, B... the, B... the BFG. The... No, no. The BFG would fire burgers, fries, and shakes. Yeah. <laughs> all at once. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd like all to at do... once. And start off in like this fancy burger joint there where all the food is gone. It's gone. It's gone AWOL. Oh, that would be crazy. I know. I'm gonna try it. Why well, say? I mean, hey, hey, yeah, did the free yeah, like did I not, 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 not don't really know much about mods or not big into mods? Hey, that'd be fine. Hey, try the TT Burger Doom mod here, people. Well, well we have not as of this moment have made the mod. Yeah. Nor are we either really planning to. This is just a joke. Yes, it's a joke, people. But like, hey. <laughs> Unless somebody out there actually wants to do that for us. Then go, go ahead and be our guest. You know, there's, there's, um, and I don't know if you want to call these mods in the vein of what we know of mods today, but, you know, I, I sometimes revisit games from my childhood, uh, games, and, and what I mean by childhood is I mean like early childhood back in the 80s. And, um, you know, I loved games like Ultima and Bard's Tale. And I know that there's a, a remaster of Bard's Tale now. But before there was a remaster of Bard's Tale and um, with the Ultima games, that they there are what they call graphical mods. Because, like, the original Ultima games, the older Ultima games, which we started coming out in the early 80s, through the late 80s, you know, those were not VGA games. So even though you can still uh, buy them and play them on DOSBox, you can get them from GOG, you can get them from Steam, they're all up there, they're all DOSBox and ready to go for Windows 10. Um, but a lot of them will have, like, graphical mods where they'll basically, you know, up, up, the, up the colors and up the amount of sprites and uh, basically take, say, like an EGA or a CGA game and make it VGA. And pretty, I think much, pretty much to make a long story short, mods that improve the visuals. You know, it would... Exactly. You know, it and, would... and there are some mods that will add um, music. So, for example, like the first couple Ultima games didn't have any music to them because sound cards really weren't a standard back then and all you had was PC speaker. Uh, even on the Apple II and uh, on the Apple II and the original, like, uh, IBM compatibles, you didn't really have much sound. You just had PC speakers. The only computers that really had sound at that time that were popular in the United States were was the Commodore 64, which had the SID chip. Um, but now you can get mods for, like, Ultima 4, Ultima 3, Ultima 5. I said that out of order because I'm an Wait, idiot. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with music. And what they have done is they've taken the music from like Ultima 6 and Ultima 7 and they've basically modded, they've made they've made it so you can mod the older versions of the game <laughs> so that it will play the music from Ultima 6 and 7 in Ultima 3, 4 and 5. Really? Which I think is really cool that they did that. So it's still Ultima music. It's music from the world that Ultima takes place in. Um but it's just from the later games when those games had music that was programmed into it because those games are from the 90s and sound cards were kind of a standardized thing by that time. So, you know, those games had music. Also, space wasn't at a premium. You know, when you're talking about, like, Ultima 4, you're talking, you know, it, it had to exist only on two, two five and a quarter floppy disks. So, you know, you have a lot of room to put stuff on there. So... Even the Commodore 64 versions, which the Commodore 64 had an advanced sound chip for its for the time that it came out. You know, that computer came out in 82, and it had the SID chip, and the SID chip kicked ass, but it was, you know, space was a problem. But, um, but yeah, you know, I thought it was cool that they, they modded some of those earlier games with music from some of the later games in the series. I thought that was really cool that they did that. 
um, just shows you the dedication. It's not that it was hard to do, but it shows you the dedication of the communities behind the games. And I think maybe this is a good point for us to kind of like touch on at the end here, right, Sadat? Is mm -hmm. it's not just the mods themselves. It's it, these mods show the dedication and the love that people have for these games because these mm -hmm. mods are not being made for profit. These companies Most won't let you them. make money off them. Most of them, exactly, are not being made for profit. It's about the love for the game. It's about improving the game, um, especially in the Minecraft community, I imagine, like you were talking about earlier. Yeah, I, I, I bet you so many of those mods are just a labor of love, right? Give yeah. it probably a few more years, and it will probably hit the 100k mark. That's that's the thing. That's the key word for mods. The key word is love. People love the game so much that, they, that they'll mod them to make them even better. So that's the key word there. They're love. Or they like the game, but they hate it because of a certain aspect, so they fix that aspect with a mod well yeah that's the thing like or like like they love it but they want to but they'll love it but they love it so much that they'll make it even more playable more fun though that's the thing mm -hmm. yeah we didn't that's really true. we didn't really talk about the grand theft auto mods we didn't really talk about grand theft auto mods did we, did we no we didn't really talk well, about them we didn't really touch upon them but there was only like on the site i was looking at when i brought those up there was only like 30 mods or so I know, like, yeah. there, hold on, let me just double check. There were some fighting games, like, like, like Tekken and so had some mods. I know there wasn't well, a lot. Well, Soul Calibur has a couple mods, but they're not very good. Yeah, I mean, just said, just said, like, um, yeah, we'll, 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 like, Soul Calibur, it's just been for another, for another day, and like that, which I, I plan on redoing those, those, those Soul, Soul, the Soul series reviews in the future, just like, just want to, like, like, redo them because, like, just, just, you know, I mean, sometimes it's good to redo, do some good, do some, some videos and stuff, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. Grand Theft Auto Five, three mods. That's it? Mm. How about, how about, yeah. what, how many, how many does three Vice City and San Andreas have? Can you look those up? It's not on the list. Hmm. Well, I can, so, let me see this. Let this me... site, it has oh, a total of zero mods. Mm -hmm. Which one? Well, I can say this about Grand Theft Auto V. Um, and I know over the years there has been a lot of mods for Grand Theft Auto V, especially uh, a lot of, again, a lot of nudity and a lot of porn mods have been made for Grand Theft Auto V because, I mean, that stuff's kind of already part of the game in many aspects. But I'll, I'll tell you why I think there's, a, there's not a lot of mods today for Grand Theft okay, Auto V. okay. With, with Grand, Grand Theft, Theft Auto of... 4 has 65, okay. Grand Theft Auto, can't see the rest of the name, has 80. And 5 on Nexus Mod has a lot more than Curse Forge, being at 236. Yeah, so, like I was saying, I, I know that a lot different of mods strikes. have, been, have different, different amounts. Yeah. And I know that a lot of mods have been made over the last decade, uh, about a decade, um, that uh, Grand Theft Auto V has been out. Um, but with Grand Theft Auto V Online being so popular even to even till today, because I know it is still uh, a hugely popular game, Grand Theft Auto Online, which is based on Grand Theft Auto V, I think because of that, a lot of the community that is behind Grand Theft Auto is playing Grand Theft Auto online. Um, and that might be a reason why you just don't see a lot of GTA 5 mods out there right now, because they're just not, they're just not being made, or they're not needed, or, um, you, you or know... Or there's just not a big enough fan base. Well, I, I think because the fan base, what I was saying is the fan base is all playing GTA online. You know, mm. as GT Online is free, basically it's free, and um, it's got a huge player base on it. And if you go on Twitch right now, you see there are so many people playing GTA Online, and GTA Online uh, is based on GTA Five. It you know, if you want to play it, you just get yourself a copy of GTA Five and update it, and boom, there you go. That's uh, that's GTA Online, and there's like private servers and public servers and it's just it's huge 
it's it's a huge I'm gonna call it kind of like an industry. GTA Online is a huge industry for Rockstar. So uh, you know that that could be why because maybe a lot of the community that exists for for our Grand Theft Auto that that are still playing they're, they're basically playing GTA Online. You know, I could be completely wrong about that. I, who knows? I don't know if anyone watching in the comments uh, knows more about GTA Online and GTA 5 than I do. Because, again, I'm not admitting to knowing a ton about the game. I, I played through the single player when it came out um, some years ago when it was re-released on the um, PlayStation uh, 4 when they did the re-release. Because, you know, the game originally came out on the PS3 and the 360. And then it got the uh, re-release on the Xbox One and the uh, PS4, and I ended up playing it on the PS4, and I played through it, and I played a ton of hours on it, um, but GTA Online is not something that I ever really got to, uh, not because I didn't like GTA. I think GTA is a great game. I think it's a fun game. I think, you know, the immersiveness is is there. I, I, I think they did a great job with it. Again, I, I loved GTA Five. I just never got into playing GTA online just because of did I. the Neither amount did of I. other games that exist out there and i just you know i'm a person who keeps going from one game to another to another to another i don't i don't spend two thousand hours on on one game i i not because i don't think a game is incredible or great i have played many incredible and many great games that i played through i beat and i moved on um the only game that i probably played maybe a thousand hours of is I did play World of Warcraft for three years, or four years, three or four years, and I, I must have done at least a thousand hours on it. Um, but other than that, I I play a game, I move on. Oblivion, I probably did a hundred to two hundred hours on Oblivion. I probably did a hundred hours or 120 hours on Skyrim, and that's got to be the highest. Uh, probably Diablo 2, back when it first came out. I probably did some grinding on that and maybe did about 80 to 100 hours on but um and i'll do it again when the diablo 2 remaster comes out but yeah, you know I, I that's just the type of player i am i just kind of move from game to game and that's the only reason why i never did any gta online uh not because it probably wasn't awesome but just because i was probably on to the next thing that's all well yeah it's like the thing with those mods like there's so many you're gonna move on to the next game the next game and next game so yeah that's that's normal well, some people just love a game so much; it's it's what it's what they play, and I totally respect that. Uh, like the Minecraft players, there there are mm -hmm. people that just play Minecraft; they don't do anything else. That's all they play, and there's nothing wrong with that because they're enjoying themselves. So I'm in a hundred percent support supporting and, that. And and video games were designed for fun, for us to have fun. True. And if if you're not if and if you're a Minecraft player and you're not looking forward to the next big game release, but you're looking forward to the next big mod release for Minecraft. That's that's I I mean that's awesome. I, I'm glad that those mods exist for you and and for anyone uh, for for Skyrim players. There are people that have been playing Skyrim for the last ten years and they just wait for the new content mods to come out because plenty of new content mods with new stories and new bad guys and just new stuff comes out for Skyrim all the time. And if you're a Skyrim player, and I was a Skyrim player, I love Skyrim, but, you know, I moved on from it a long time ago. And if you're just waiting for your next Skyrim mod, I I applaud that as well, and I hope that you get it soon. Because... But can we just say something right quick? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Some mods are utterly ridiculous. <laughs> like which ones? Which ones? <laughs> I've seen a video where... This guy put a bunch of mods in his Skyrim game, and it was just utterly ridiculous. What it, what it, uh, what happened to his game? I'll have like... to send you the video because I don't remember much. I've only watched it once, but I do remember it was utterly ridiculous. It was like all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, there's a lot of, like, uh, mods for Skyrim that are, like, uh, graphical overhauls where it's like you can get a mod to change all the houses and a mod to change all the trees and a mod to add more shrubbery and a mod... So you can, like, you could just totally 
overrun your entire Skyrim world with all of these like mods to change like hey, how people um, look and guys? Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. Is that a Thomas the Tank Engine I see coming right at us? Hmm? Thomas the Tank Engine? What? What are you talking about? I remembered that some mods would just throw in something random and have something like Thomas the Tank Engine charging at you like a monster. I was like uh, wondering, like, really? what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, really? For which games? For which games? I don't remember which games, but I remember seeing it in some 3D game. Hmm. I believe it. I mean, you know, people do crazy stuff, and I, I bet you that there are program programmers out there that grew up on Thomas the Tank, and they wanted everyone else to share their love, so, <laughs> so they built a mod to put Thomas the Tank in your, uh, in your game. How old is Thomas the Tank, by the way? What, when is it from? Is it from the 90s? Is it from 80s? Is it? Well, because I don't remember Thomas the Tank when I was a kid. You want me to be honest? I heard Thomas the Tank Engine was created, the character was created in 1945. Okay, so it's a, it predates even me. <laughs> that, that's, uh, you are correct. I just looked it up. 1946 was the first no, appearance 45. of Thomas. Well, 45. Uh, birth date, May 12, 1945. Yep. First appearance was in the show. Thomas the Tank Engine, 1946. Found it. I found the first that video. Published in a book series, which came out in 45. I put a video in the chat here. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. So that means Thomas the Tank was uh, most definitely around when I was a little kid, which was, you know, uh, the early 80s. Um, but... It wasn't something I was interested in. I mean, I was, I was big into Transformers and GI Joe and He Man and um, a lot of the original. Uh, I shouldn't say the original, but some of the first anime like Star Blazers and Force Five and um, you know, a lot of that <laughs> stuff that came over then. <laughs> oh, and Grandizer. That's what I was trying to think of. Grandizer. A lot of those old uh, Japanese animes. The the first uh, the first Gundam series, Gundam Mobile Suit. Um, but that was the kind of stuff I watched when I was a little kid. Not not any of this Thomas the Tank stuff. But hey, Thomas the Tank was around. Was around. I feel like we just went into a little history thing for a second. Well, hey, nothing wrong with that. It's not that. I mean, like, yeah, I mean. True. Yeah. Learning. I know. I I didn't. I didn't know that un, un, until until TT said that Thomas was 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 from 1945. I didn't realize he was that that it was that old. Yeah, I don't think anybody. <laughs> yeah, did I didn't realize it was that way, old. Because I'm sure, I'm sure, if we were around in the 40s, yeah, we probably would have known. But since I was born in 19, 1988, and yeah, there's no way I could have known that. Mm. But like, do you got any else to say? Cause like, um, cause like, it's just that, that like we've been about the one hour. Oh, longer. that's. You, but you know what? You know who's still older than Thomas the Tank? Who? My boy Batman. You know what I thought you were going to say, Graham? I thought you were going to say. What? I thought you were going to say White Castle's older than that because White Castle started in the 1920s. Yes, and that's older than Batman because Batman's from 39. But yeah. yes, that's true. Or, or Superman. Because he's from the 1920s as well. Yeah. True that. Superman. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what else I can say about mods other than you know they are for the love of the games that we love. They right? are. Definitely. And they give a lot of life to games that might not have had the life that they had. Again, you know the argument with Bethesda is would have would. Bethesda games have been Bethesda games without the modding communities behind them. And I, for one, might say, I don't know. That's a true statement, right? Um, we've gotten so much out of mods for Skyrim and Oblivion and Morrowind and Fallout and, and all so the forth. Games. That, Far Cry and all of them, yeah. You know, but... Yeah, you know, would they have been the same games? I, I don't know. We'll never know. I guess that's, yeah, that's not a world that I lived in. The world that we lived in was the world with those mods, and I'm happy for that. 
We all are happy, yeah, because mining, mm -hmm. did you see, well, since we'll hold a place in our heart, definitely. So that you got anything else to say? Mm. Well, I'm happy Rival of Aether's got mods because I can finally play as a God of War in a fighting game, aside from Pokin. Haha, <laughs> very cool, definitely. I don't have anything else to say because I'm not really a big mod person, but like, next episode I do, we're going to be talking about portable systems, like the like, like the PlayStation Portable, PlayStation Vita, and I Nintendo think we could also throw in Epic Games as well. Well, for the portable thing, Since yeah. Since technically Epic Games are portable games. Okay, we'll throw that in here as well, though. Like, next episode, episode 8 will how be... About, how about Game & Watches? Sure, yeah, well... Yeah. Mr. Game & Watch! Mr. Oh, yeah. Mr. Game & Watch! <laughs> yeah. Bum Smash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, episode 9, we'll say, we'll say episode 9, we're going to talk, we'll talk about portable gaming, stuff like that, so... So, to say uh, that. just a question, just a question, and so everyone knows, um, are we doing a certain era of portables, or just portables in general, all the way back to, say, like, the Game Gear, the Game Boy, the well, Lynx, that's... all the way up to the current... Well, uh, it depends, Vita I, I, will, I, haven't, I haven't really... Hold on, me too, hold on. We can't really give away too much now, can we? No. That's we true. That's true. So we should shut up now. <laughs> yeah. We, we'll should, we should just there. shut up now. We'll shut up there and just, you'll see when, 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 when we film episode 9. And this is going to be big here. And that's pretty much, much all we got to say there about this episode. And the Need for Speed franchise review will continue. Like I said, we're going to be doing six parts there. And after that... We'll be, I'll be doing a review on the series called Blank Out, and I know no one here is allowed to mention what it is until you see the video itself, so you have to find out there. Oh, why can't I mention it? And oh, it? here's the problem. Your sensor alarm there's is going two, off, that's why. There's, there's, been, there's been two popular series that have been Blank Out. Yes. Okay. And, and they're both... I want to say anything more. I'm not going to. I'm, no, not, not, I'm not going to violate my NDA. I'm not going to violate my TV <laughs> NDA gonna... and get fired. So I will say no more. You'll find <laughs> out. That's all I got to say. All I can say is you'll, 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 all your only hit, blank out, and a, and a multi-part review. That's all I'm telling you. And it's part of the fifth generation of gaming. It's all your, that's the only hit you're getting. If you, and, if you and, know what... and both of them had multiple uh, versions. And both of them were part of the fifth generation of gaming. Yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know, and that's all I'm going to say there. And the reviews will continue, and there'll be a lot of racing. There's going to be a lot, lot, lot more racing action and Need for Speed coming up, so I'll be looking for that. But all we got to say is it's Tony, Sadet, and Grim Monolith. Peace out, and see you all in Episode 9, where we're going to talk about See portable you gaming. next time. Okay, Bye. Guys, guys. See you next you wanna time. You want to know what Bye. it really is? What? What? You, you, you want to know what... The game he's going to review really is. Well, yeah, uh, let's, let's let's hear it then. But your guess. I've Sadat. signed off. I've signed off. Well, let's give it that a guess here. Cool borders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luck. Yeah, nice guess there. But you'll all find out in in episode 179 when I get done with the Need for Speed games. Which all you know. Peace out, everybody, and take care. All right, night, everyone. Night, night. Bye. Bye, bye. <laughs>